Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a review of a splendid new disc that will really appeal to fans of Czech composer Bohuslav Martinu. Now, we all love Martinu, don't we? And if some of you haven't listened and gotten to know Martinu, you really should. But one of Martinu's most illustrious pupils, who actually only studied with him for about a year, in 1947-48, in New York, of all places, was Czech composer Jan Novak. Now, this is not to be confused with Vyacheslav Novak, who is a completely different guy, and they're not related. Anyway, Jan Novak wrote a lot of really wonderful music in a kind of bubbly neoclassical vein. It's very approachable. It's very busy and exciting, often lyrical, based on Czech folk music to a degree. He had a bad relationship with the Czech Communist Party, which is usually a good thing. You don't want to get along too well with the party. And he wound up leaving Czechoslovakia in 1968. And he spent some time in, in Europe. He went to Denmark and then Italy and then Germany, where he, he passed away in 1984. He was born in 1921. Now, we've had occasion to talk about Novak before, particularly in relation to, his, uh, to some of his other orchestral music. In, in the remember, remember we talked about, oh, I have a video of it. There's another review. Go look at it of Martinu's amazing cantata, The Bouquet of Flowers. And the new recording of that, because there are only two um, or three, actually, but we're not going to get into that. Um, that was coupled with a work of Jan Novak, which was absolutely beautiful. A set of like symphonic dances or something like that. I have it actually over in the other part of the world. So I don't have it handy and can't tell you exactly what the coupling was called, but I loved it, and it was wonderful, and I can hum a few bars if you want. Um, I remember music. I don't remember, like, titles and things. It's, it's sort of curious. Anyway, anyway, here is a wonderful new series, Orchestral Works, Orchestral Music, Volume 1. And this particular disc on Takata Classics contains his... Concerto Biugis or Biugis or B I I U G I S, which means which means yoked together. It's for two pianos, or piano four hands. Pardon me, piano four hands and string orchestra, and then his oboe concerto, and his concerto for piano and string orchestra, and they are delicious. Really, really lively, exciting, fun pieces to listen to, full of wonderful rhythms and spiky harmonies and and really soulful lyrical interludes. And I mean, you're really going to like it. If you know and like Martinu, you're really going to like this guy. The piano concerto is the piece that sounds most like Martinu, actually. Um, you know, there's that that singing syncopation you know, that sort of 6-8, syncopated 6-8 tempo where the rhythm is da 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 like that. You know, and it's so it keeps it keeps the music flowing over the bar lines. And then there are these just beautiful lyrical moments, but it's not it's not slavish imitation. It really isn't. It's it's more like both composers were working in a similar school or with similar aesthetic parameters, and that's what really matters. The oboe concerto is for oboe and a delicious little ensemble of strings and winds. Um, they are they are three flutes, three bassoons, and three horns, and it's really a lovely oboe concerto. Now Martin, who wrote an oboe concerto. But Novak's was written a couple years before Martin News, and there isn't any evidence that, that either was aware of what the other was doing, but it really is charming. It's delightful, because at that point, you know, Novak was living in the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia at that time, and Martin New was in exile in the United States in the 1950s. So they did communicate with each other throughout, throughout uh, Martin News' lifetime after he had met Novak, but, you know, who knows? They're just wonderful works, both of them. Both of them are charming. And the Novak piece is uh, definitely one of the better better concerti I've ever heard for an oboe. You know, oboe concertos are difficult. They tend to be fatiguing on the ear, you know, especially when the instrument has a lot of writing in its upper register and it starts to wail and you start to go like that, you know. 
but this is a wonderful performance. The oboist is is Willem Weverka, oboe, and the ensemble, by the way, for all of these things, is the Ensemble Opera Diversa under Gabriela Tardonova. And they're really good. They are a very small chamber orchestra and ensemble. They have singers and other things because they're diversa. Get it? Diversa? Um, they're, they're based in Brno. They are fully professional. The only quibble I have with them is that, frankly, the number of strings sounds to me rather small. I mean, it is small. It's tiny. It's like four first violins and four seconds and, you know. And, and so for this music, I think a, a heftier ensemble sound would have been preferable, but I cannot fault the playing at all. I really can't. And in the piano concerto, the uh, pianist is Alice Reinohova, um, or Alice, or Alice, or Alice, or whatever you want to call her in, in Czech. She's very, very good, Reinohova. And then last, but certainly not least, oh my goodness, is the consensus, the consensus bugis. You know, like I said, that means yoked together for piano four hands. It's not a concerto, it's a consensus. It's they're agreeing to be bound. And it's for piano four hands and string orchestra. It's a piano concerto. Let's just call it that for piano four hands. And boy, is it fun. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's really, I think, the, the, finest work on the disc. It is it is completely exciting. I mean, really exciting. It opens with a theme which is the same sort of four-note thing that sounds like the uh, beginning of the Dvorak Requiem. Da, 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 that thing. It's similar to the Shostakovich motto, to the Bach motto, and it's the death motto in the Dvorak Requiem, used in the Azrael Symphony and in Martin Luther's Sixth Symphony. So it's tied into that grand tradition of Czech music. And boy, oh boy, does this piece, at the end of the first movement, the piano writing goes completely nuts. I mean, it's nothing like what Martin Luther would have done. You know, Martin Luther was far more controlled. But this guy, oh my goodness, he just goes crazy. And the opening of the finale does sort of its take on bits of the rite of spring. You know, junk, 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 you know, something like that. So there's Stravinsky, there's Martinu, there's a bit of jazz, there's Czech folk music. It's a very, very fertile and eclectic mix of elements, which means that I really, really, really am looking forward to other issues in this series. Now, in the consensus, whatever it's called, we have the piano duet. Let's see, Lucy Shinzelova and Kristina Znamenachkova. That is as close as I'm going to get, frankly. Um, but it's wonderful. Wonderful music, wonderfully played, beautifully recorded. A little bit, um, I, I, the oboe concerto, things are a little bit more closer up, and they pull back a bit for the, for the concerto for piano four hands, which actually makes a lot of sense because it's, it's a much bangier piece. You want a little more amplitude and an opportunity for the strings to sound a little richer. Um, and so any quibbles that I have are just those, quibbles. It's a wonderful disc of orchestral music by a wonderful composer who I'm really, really looking forward to getting to know better um, because we don't know most of his music and he was quite prolific. So, so we have hopes. We have hopes for marvels to come. But in the meantime, you may very well want to start with this particular disc. You won't be sorry on Takata Classics. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.